Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'll be talking about open source and paid internship opportunities out there. So um, before now, I've been getting some questions around open source. People asking me what are those opportunities? How can they apply? How can they um, take advantage of those opportunities, especially uh, open source opportunities like that of um, Google Summer of Code, uh, Google Season of Thought, and um, Outreach. So those are the three major open source opportunities, paid internship opportunities I'm going to be focusing my talk on today. So basically, um, uh, for those of us that don't know what open source is, open source is just um, your ability to contribute to uh, code or technical documentation or docs out there that are open, things that are open and free of use. They are licensed to be used freely by anyone. So once you see those, um, kind of code or repositories and things like that, you are very free to contribute, make your own contribution and then make a pull request for the maintainers of those open source repositories to be able to like look into what you have contributed and merge it if it's no good, if it looks good and things like that. So now without going into the nitty gritty or going too deep into the technical aspects of the repositories and all. I'm going to be focusing on how you can apply, how you can get in and the opportunities are very good. So now starting with Google Summer of Code, Google Summer of Code happens like once in a year and it used to be open to students only but now anybody can apply. Season of Doc is also um it's also a program run by Google, and then it's done once in a year as well. So um, before now, it used to be like three months, but now there's no limit. It all depends on the project you are working on and the organization. So you send your proposals to the organizations, and if they find it interesting, then they can reach out to you to contribute to the organization during the period of the internship period. Yeah, so... Then for the Google Summer of Code, you also need to apply and then submit your proposal, then start contributing to the organization of your choice. And then if you are good, they call you and then you start contributing fully into the project. Now, Outreachy is another one out there. Outreachy is a lot more complicated in terms of the process. So I'm going to spend more time on that. So, but before I do that, let me go back to um, Season of Talk and Google Summer of Code. Now, Summer of Code is for people that write code. This is for people that write technical documentation. And then for some of for Season of Doc, there's no fixed amount as to what you are being paid. Or, although before now it used to be one three thousand and dollars and now they changed the process, the procedures of payment and all. So it's strictly based on uh the organization you are contributing to. So if the organization receive a uh, fund to because each organization is going to apply to participate in the season of doc and if that organization in a sector is approved and what they submitted as their budget for the for the period of internship for whoever they are going to employ as the technical writer that is what you are going to be paid so it could be ten thousand dollars it could be five thousand depends so for summer for google summer of code that one is one five dollars and it's for coders. Season of Doc is for technical writers, people that write technical documentations. And then we go back to Outreachy. Now, Outreachy uh, involves three step process. It involves the application phase, the contribution phase, and the internship period itself. Now, the um, contribution phase, uh, no, the application phase, first of all, ask some essay questions that people normally find difficult to answer like uh um are you part of an underrepresented group or make you underrepresented have you ever applied and then you have been denied due to discrimination things like that so um people you really find those type of questions confusing um i'm not sure why but it's pretty much straightforward and actually has done very well to so have more descriptions to those um, contents or to those essay questions so that you'll be able to answer them easily. So now when you are asked, are you part of an underrepresented group? The reason for that is because Outreach is actually trying to focus the 
um, the internship opportunities to underrepresented people, people that are underrepresented in tech. For instance, we have FEMI, a lot of guys, we have more guys in the tech space than FEMI. So because of that, actually I'm trying to like try to balance the gap by focusing more attention on those people that are, are underrepresented, people that are probably underrepresented due to their sex, due to their age, due to their location, due to their sexual identification. So things like that, those are things that can make people all that are represented. So you need to find out which of these categories you fall under and explain why you feel you are underrepresented. And then have you been discriminated by in the course of trying to like apply for a job or have you also been discriminated in the course of trying to build your skills and all. So you need to be able to explain to the outreach team in your essay in what way you feel you have been under, if you feel you have been discriminated or in what way you have faced challenges while trying to build up your skill and all. So that's basically what the essay is. Now, when you're done with the essay part and everything is good, you submit your essay and then you can actually start to start contributing to whatever organization of your choice. And at this point, I would like to say that when choosing an organization, don't choose an organization based on the name of the organization because ah, this organization is big shows and stuff like that. You shouldn't do that. You should choose an organization based on what projects they want to do. And is it a project that you find interesting? And is it something that is within your skill set? Those are the questions you ask yourself before deciding on which organization you want to contribute to for the period of the open source internship. So I will figure that out. If you have figured that one out, then the next thing for you is to, to start contributing to that project. Don't wait till the, don't even wait till application is open for our 3 g Don't, the same thing applies to Google Summer of Code or Season of Talk. If you want to start contributing to any of those projects to stand a better chance, now is your time to start contributing. Don't wait till the application is open or don't wait till they go through the application phase and they, they select the people they want to select for the that pass that skip through the application phase. So my advice will always be start contributing now. Now is the time for you to start contributing. If at all you are really serious about contributing to any of those open source projects and getting selected, now is your time to start contributing because the more contributions, relevant contributions you make, and the more you get to familiarize yourself with the community, the better your chances of being selected when the application process finally kicks in. So um, that will be my advice for you. So then once the application phase is over and then they have selected those that skin through, the next thing is to start contributing to the organization that you have selected. Then at this stage, it's pretty much uh, competitive because other people are also contributing. So do your best and contribute your best during this phase. After the contribution phase, you are supposed to write a proposal. And also this period is also the time for you to relate with your mentors and also write your proposals for uh, about the project and what you plan to do during the course of the internship. So the, the better your proposal, the better your chances also for getting into the internship phase. Now in the internship phase, the inter internship phase lasts for three months. So during the course of three months, you are going to be paid several thousand dollars for contributing to the r 3 project. That's pretty much big for people that are just starting out their career. And then, so you start, you receive your money and you provide your account details to the r 3 team and then they, it's most likely going to be a dollar account. So you depend on where you are though. And then you get paid when it's time for them to make payments. So um, guys, that's pretty much it. And if you feel like you've learned something from this video and you would love to share with all of your friends and colleagues. Uh, I would really appreciate that. And don't just watch it. Please do where to subscribe to my channel, like it and share with your friends out there.
Thank you very much. And uh, if you have any more questions, do wait to reach out to me on Twitter and you can also drop in the comments. I'll be right here to answer most of the questions you have related to open source tech generally and all yours. So thank you guys.